Hey, how's it going guys? Mr. Boss for the win here. And in today's Grand Theft Auto 5 video, I'm going to be telling you guys which bunker is the best, going over all the locations, the pros and the cons, as well as giving you an in-depth guide at what's inside the bunkers, what you can expect, some secret features, details, and a whole lot more. So let's start with the bunker location. So I've got two tips to start off with that regardless of what you think of my opinion, you should take this into consideration. Number one, do not buy the cheapest bunker for a couple reasons. Number one, it's probably in a bad location. Number two, since it's the cheapest, a lot of people are going to pick that one by default. They're gonna to wanna to save the most money. And if you do that, that means that there's more likely to be a bunch of activity around your bunker because more people are going to have that one. And number two, don't buy the most expensive one either. Now I know this might sound obvious, but some people may see the price tag, they may see it's the most expensive and assume that it has the the most and best features. As you'll find out in a bit, that's not true. And if we apply that same logic, that means that there's gonna be a majority of people that are gonna be selecting that, thus there's gonna be more people that have your bunker, which you obviously don't want. So let's talk about the bunker locations. There is 11 of them in total, and they're all scattered north of the city. Most of them are in the Grand Sonora Desert, some a little bit farther south, some a little bit farther north. So let's talk about the first location and that is the Chumash Bunker. Now this is the furthest most south one, so this is why I don't actually like it. Now it's got an okay price tag of 1.65 million, but due to the fact that it's closest to the city, this is gonna be a very popular location for a lot of players, as they're obviously gonna be wanna be pretty close to where they're most familiar with, and that is inside of the city, so that's the first one. The second one is Lago Zancudo Bunker. Now, I would also stay away from this one for a couple reasons. Number one, Fort Zancudo likes to trigger a lot of Meriwether activity, which could cause you trouble, but also Fort Zancudo is going to be a magnet for players that want to get close to this iconic military base. So I would also stay away from the Fort Zancudo one. You've got the Polito Forest one, which I actually believe is the cheapest at 1.165 million. Two reasons I don't like this, the cheapness of the price and the location. I am not a huge fan of Polito Bay. It is super isolated from everything, so I would not recommend that one. You've then got the Raton Canyon one, which is actually 1.45 million. I don't think this is a terrible one, but its location is really tricky in between the two mountains, so I'm not necessarily a fan of that. And I should also tell you guys that each one of these bunkers has their own like description, so if you wanna read that for yourself, you can. They're pretty comical and satirical, so I definitely recommend checking that out. The next one is the Grape Seed Bunker, $1.75 million. This one isn't terrible either, but it's on the wrong side of the Alamo Sea for me, which means you'd have to take the long way at pretty much everything you're doing. The price isn't terrible, but I don't exactly love the location. The next one we have is the Route 68 Bunker. Now, I really like this one. It's at a good spot. Uh, its price tag is right in the middle, so people aren't gonna be gravitating towards it too much. And it's right connected to a major highway. It's kind of in the middle of the map. So this is an overall pretty good spot that I would recommend. Not too bad of a price. And its location is certainly okay. Right next to it, you've got the Gran Sonora Oil Field Bunker. Again, really similar here. You're only like a couple hundred meters away. Your price tag is over $2 million. Same thing. It's in the middle of the map. It's close to Trevor's Airfield. If you like that location, cool. It's just a little bit more expensive. The one to the right of that is the Gran Sonora Desert Bunker, which gets, once again, more expensive. But uh, you're really in the exact same spot. So, it, it, again, you're not really getting any much more benefit. You're just paying a little bit more money. The next bunker is the farmhouse bunker, and that is 2.375 million. This is the most expensive bunker. Don't get this one. Yes, it's in a pretty good spot, but the most expensive one is going to trigger a lot of people. And this was also the one that was featured in the trailer. So it's familiar and people are gonna to wanna to gravitate towards that. So do not go for this one in my personal opinion. The next one is the smoke tree road bunker. This one isn't terrible. 
It's $2.2 million. Again, it's a little bit north than where I want, and it's also slightly in the middle of the map, and it's pretty pricey, but I still think it's an okay position if that's the one you're trying to go for. The second to last bunker we're gonna be looking at today is the Grape Seed Bunker, coming in at 1.75 million. This one isn't bad either, but Grape Seed puts us on the north side of the Alamo Sea, which can be a little bit tricky, and it also has its back right up to Mount Chiliad, which can cut you off from some major major pipeline. So I like that one. It's not bad, but again, its location is a little too tricky for me, especially if I'm spending $1.7 million on it. However, in my opinion, we have truly saved the best for last, and it is the Thompson Scrapyard Bunker. So it's a little pricey, $2.29 million, although it's not the most expensive, which is good. And the reason I like this one the most is because it's located right next to the highway. So when you're doing your missions, that's probably gonna be the quickest and most efficient route of transportation, and boom, right off the highway, you've got a bunker right then and there. And if you need to get to the city, boom, you just jump on the highway. So to me, the Thompson Scrapyard is overall the best location as far as the bunkers go. A little pricey, yes, but its location is amazing, and I don't think a whole lot of players are gonna know about this. So I definitely recommend you end up choosing this one. So I'm going back and editing this video, and I feel like I left out one important point. All of the bunker interiors are the exact same with some minor detail changes that you're gonna see in a little bit. So really what you're paying for is location. So you do need to keep that in mind when selecting a bunker that the only thing you are choosing is location. Everything else like aesthetics and the interior remains the exact same regardless of the bunker you choose. Now, once you've selected a bunker, we now need to take a look at what you can do. So there's three bunker styles. The first of one is pretty bare bones. It's got gray walls, nothing all that special. The second one is blue. It's kind of like a, a mid-tier mild upgrade. And then the third one is probably the most high tech with the yellow walls and the fancy lighting. So you are able to get three bunker styles, which is pretty awesome. You also have the ability to add a personal quarters, very similar to what you can do in the CEO offices, allowing you to spawn and sleep there, which is pretty epic. The biggest investment you're going to make is the shooting range. And the shooting range is eight hundred and forty five thousand dollars depending on which one you select the black one is 740 white one is a little bit more expensive 845 so this is by far the biggest investment you can make in your bunker but as we'll get on i actually do believe it's worth it and the personal quarter is two hundred sixty five thousand dollars again that is not all that bad a gun locker very similar to what we see in the mc offices and the ceo stuff and then transportation which World's most expensive golf cart right here. The caddy number one is $85,000 and caddy number two is $120,000. Man, those are expensive golf carts. But one thing I will recommend is actually getting the caddies because the one thing about the bunkers is that their interiors are almost maze-like. They have very little organization or structure, and there's not really any signs directing it. So it can kind of be hard to find what you need, and it's easy to get lost. So I actually do recommend the transportation just because of how kind of clumsy the bunkers themselves are. And that right there is it. And once you've picked out a bunker, this is how you go in. There are simply hatches on the road and you drive up to them or you walk up to them and an animation is gonna take place where you either drive or walk inside. Now, if you're doing this for the first time, you will be greeted by Agent 14, who is gonna take you on a nice long journey of detailing and instructing you everything about your bunker. Now, we are not gonna be listening to this in this video, but as I'm sure you guys have already had the pleasure of dealing with Agent 14, but just know that you'll be taking on a nice long journey through the bunker and he will definitely explain everything. Our first stop today is actually gonna take us to the bunker vehicle workshop where we can customize the MOC. We can do very minor upgrades like changing the color, the transmission, all sorts of fun stuff like that. We also have access to a brand new network system called Disruption Logistics. Logistics, which allows us to start up our bunker missions and businesses. This is actually pretty cool in my opinion. 
We also get a weapons manufacturing area where weapons and ammo will be built here, which is pretty cool by our staff. There'll also be a symbol. There's a research area. There is a ton that actually happens inside of this facility. A lot of like dynamic moving parts, which is pretty cool. You can also watch your NPCs do research, which is pretty epic. They, they do a lot of miscellaneous tasks like what you see inside of the biker business. So that right there is pretty cool. And the majority of the dynamic tasks that you can do inside of the bunker. However, the most dynamic is the shooting range, which will actually take you through a pretty cool series of challenges that you can do inside of the bunker itself. Now, these challenges are fun. They are similar to what you would experience topside at an ammunition store. However, there's actually a pretty cool twist to beating the gun range, which is actually awesome. So your reward for completing all the shooting range challenges is epic. You get projectile carrying capacity increase and refilled in both grenades, sticky bombs, tear gas, Molotov, pipe bombs, and proximity mines. Instead of it being 25, it's now 30. So that is a huge bump up right there and definitely worth your time in order to complete it. You also get clothing items added to your wardrobe, including three caps, six t-shirts, and three hoodies. So that's a nice little reward right there just for completing those missions. So I know the investment in the gun range can be pretty pricey. I, I, you're definitely not wrong there, but that upgrade in and of itself is quite nice. And in my opinion, definitely makes it worth it. Now, another thing you need to know about the bunker, which is pretty cool, is you can actually drive your personal vehicle inside the bunker. And if you own the personal vehicle storage bay for your MOC, you can drive your personal vehicle into the MOC while you're both inside your bunker. Now, before I leave you guys today with this video, I just need to give a big shout out to my friend John Sheprox for helping me record this. Once again, I am at E3 and he was really generous enough and kind enough to show you everything that you guys are experiencing in this video today. This is his bunker. He did all of this. So I'll leave a link to his channel in the description. Give him a big thank you. Say hello to him. Uh, so he was a huge help with this video and it obviously couldn't be done without him. But really that is it right there and that is the full tour breakdown and so much more including secret features and details of the new bunkers in Grand Theft Auto Online. I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments section down below. Which bunker did you choose and why? What upgrades have you done? Are you getting lost and confused like Austin Powers trying to drive a golf cart on the inside? Again, I wanna hear from you guys down there. I'm really curious to hear what you guys are thinking. If you did go on to enjoy this video though, a like rating would of course be awesome. And also subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new or you like daily GTA 5 videos like this. With all the way guys, like I said, thanks so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you guys in the next video.